Done politics, we've done reggae, it's now time for the football. Good afternoon, and welcome to City 97.3. It's our exclusive and unparalleled coverage of the Barclays English Premier League. We have two games for you today, and then we have another two tomorrow. You're welcome once again. My name is Gary Al Smith in the studio with me, Nathan Kwao, serial troublemaker. Hi, Nathan. Hello, Gary. Also joining us from the United Arab Emirates. A regular troublemaker and panelist as well, Shiva Magnani. Hi, Shivam. Hi, Gary. Yep. Today, we are going to be doing the game between Villa and Arsenal. And um, when I invited Shivam over to join us in our coverage today, he said he'll be grateful to join us to, to see Arsenal lose. He's a Chelsea fan. Nathan also supports one of the other protagonist teams. <laughs> and tomorrow, we are going to be seeing oh, Chelsea play Liverpool in the big one of this weekend's fixtures, but today we have to see Arsenal try to redeem themselves once again. Mr. Arsene Wenger has been speaking. He's seen two of his players selected for the English national team squad. He's been reacting to them with mixed reactions. He's a bit happy that Jack Wilshere has been considered for uh, the English national team duties. However, he doesn't like the fact that his player who has just returned from injury is being utilized so much. Also, we'll be looking at Aston Villa I mean, they are such a young team. They remind everybody of the time Manchester United were a youthful side and Alan Hansen made that infamous quotation that young boys never win leagues. That season, the English Premier League was won by Manchester United. There's so much to discuss here on the Barclays English Premier League. Thank you for joining us again. It's as interactive as ever. Facebook, Twitter, Google+. Plus. This is City 97.3. It's great to be back. Last year, last uh, week, I couldn't be here. Godfrey Akutubwa for held the fort brilliantly in my absence. But it's great to be back again. And Arsenal will also want to be back this time around. The team sheets are out. We'll be giving them to you shortly. But Arsenal have no injury worries to contend with for the clash against Villa, which kicks off in just about 17 minutes. So expect Arsenal Wenger to rotate slightly after facing a tough Everton side just three days previously. Alex Osley, Chamberlain and Gervinho may come in with your wall cut and Thomas Rosiski will be relegated to the bench. Nathan, your initial thoughts on Villa versus Arsenal? Well, it is, I think that is a clash of two London sides. Arsenal, as you said, uh, need to need to bounce back. They lost at Manchester United last week. Midweek, I thought they were going to get the win over Schalke, they didn't get the win. They lost the two-goal lead. But today, they must go back to basics and get the three points. I don't care how they do it. They must do it today because Arsene Wenger increasingly is coming under a lot of pressure from the Arsenal faithful. Critics have dug deep into him this week, asking whether his side is strong enough to rub it in with the best of, of England, with the, with, with the rest of Europe. But today is a day where everything must be put aside. Arsenal must focus hard. Because as, as we I mean, delve into the analysis, people will realize that Arsenal have had a good record over Fulham ever since they moved to the Emirates. So they want to keep that going. For Fulham, they've played brilliant football up to this point, Martin. Your side has been good. They, they, they've been solid. I've loved the way Dimitri Albertov has settled in. Brian Ruiz is still showing the, the class and, and efficiency he showed for FC20 when he was in Holland. So I think that is, 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 is set up to be a good tie. It will be very positive. I don't think Fulham will come out and play negative football. But after 90 minutes, Arsenal fans would hope that it is a good day. Fulham fans will hope to walk away with something better than a point. That, that's the best defense against Arsenal in a long time. So it, it sets up to be a brilliant afternoon. Shivam, also, um, your initial thoughts on this game. Obviously, you've already told me that you will be grateful to be here to see Arsenal <laughs> lose. Why do you think Arsenal are going to lose against Fulham? It's Fulham, really. Yeah, I, I really don't think Arsenal will lose. I was just uh, poking fun. Because, uh, I mean, I'm just looking at the stat here. It's, uh, Fulham not won at Arsenal in the last 26 visits there. So, I mean, it's nailed on Arsenal win. They just have to play well. Get Theo Walcott if he starts on the ball. And then they should have fun with Fulham's uh, back four. They should have fun with Fulham's back four. Let's talk about the back four now, Nathan. I mean, how bad have they been? 
<laughs> Arsenal, they started well, but along the way, they they they, they lost a, a bit of the plot. I thought that last week, Tommy Vermeulen was poor, and and I was talking to, to a few friends of, uh, on a day of days, when you play Manchester United, you're supposed to put your best foot forward. He didn't. He put his wrong foot forward, which was his right boot. Robin Van Persie got past him a few times. But even apart from that, that isolated performance, the Arsenal back for has been a bit flat. They've not played well. The marking has not been that good, from especially from set pieces. And in terms of organization, it's not been that static. Again, I go back to Asin Wenger's decision of quickly throwing in Bakaya Sanya. I thought that Jenkinson has been having a good run. Allow him to settle. Sanya obviously owns that position. He will come into the team. But Asin Wenger knows his squad. Initially, as I said, it was good. But along the path, they've lost a bit of their way. And I just hope they can get it together today because one more bad performance, then the critics start, you know, everything will start going wrong because this Arsenal back for look promising but they've just not been up to it this season interesting indeed but Shivam, i mean that's by the statistic you gave that fulham haven't won um what in 26 attempts you said you yeah. have to say that the stats don't lie fulham can actually lead from arsenal you know um and establish themselves as european hopefuls when the game kicks off in just about 40 minutes fulham are on a four game unbeaten run having defeated aston villa and played out draws with everton reading and Southampton. So it's looking quite good for, for Fulham, isn't it, Shivam? It, it is. And, I mean, they have a, a, in Brian Ruiz and in uh, Berbatov, they have an excellent uh, attacking force. So you you can see where they can cause Arsenal problems. And Martin Yol is a great manager. Uh, uh, you saw what he did with Spurs. So I think, yeah, Fulham are realistic contenders for European spots come May. Right, but you know, Nathan made a point about the fact that Vermeling, who was, was, had a bad day against Manchester, he was he was quite woeful, you know, honestly. Had, however, Mr. Wenger himself has been saying that probably the captain is burdened with his new responsibility, Shivam. Do you agree? I don't agree. I, I, I think um, he's just been poor and he, and he has to do a lot because Andre Santos is also not, not exactly defending. So he has an extra responsibility of coping with Andre Santos, but I don't think the captaincy has done anything to him. Well, I, I thought Vermeulen was well suited for this captain captaincy position. I, it's incredible to think that Arsene Wenger would imagine that uh, Vermeulen being handed a captain's band would bed him. I mean, even when Robin Van Persie was around, he still showed a lot of leadership quality. When Van Persie was out injured, he took he took the badge. So it's not really it's not really that. It's not because he's being burdened by the captaincy. I think that he's just having a bad run. He needs to calm himself now. He needs to believe more in his ability. Funny enough, that a, a defender like Per Metasaka, who was criticised a lot for not having enough pace of course he's still that slow but i think that he's improved the season so you you got to you you've got to look at the melon and say that you know what tommy build up your game step up to the plate and then you can combine well with meta saka because as i said meta saka has improved a lot if the melon can get to that point where he was last season then they can begin to marshal the arsenal back for and then prevent some of the goals they've been conceding interesting indeed but if you look at the stats sometimes uh, you have a feeling that arsenal may yet yet not win this one. I mean, Arsenal um, are seventh on the table. Fulham are eighth. The only separating them is goal difference. And Arsenal can ill afford to lose, having just taken two wins from their past six games in all competitions. Nathan? Of course. I mean, as, as we said, they've got to win this today. It's, it's not as though they have the luxury of uh, of relaxing now and playing catch up later but at that time it will be too late and it's interesting that they are playing Fulham now I mean last season two seasons three seasons ago you close your eyes and say Arsenal should win this of course this afternoon they are favourites I still put my money on them but they must work hard this Fulham side is beginning to believe a lot in their ability you look at the purchases they've brought in Risa uh, the Gaja, especially Dimitar Berbatov, he's brought a lot of life into the attack. Last season, even though they looked efficient and all, there was a spark that was missing. It looks like Berbatov has provided it. So Arsenal must must be at their best. Every aspect of their game must be on point today. Else, it will be another frustrating afternoon and the season gets more complicated. It's already complicated at this point. 15 points out of 10 games is not good enough. They must get the points on the board. Pray that other things happen at other grounds, but they must do their bit today. And against this Fulham side that's enjoying a good run, they, they must put their best foot forward. Preliminary talk out of the way. Let's start looking at the teams. Let's look at the away side first. Fulham, Schwarza, <laughs> Rita, Hangeland, Hughes, Risa, Dejaga, Bad, Sidwell, Richardson, Ruiz, and Dimitar. Uh, quite an expected lineup, yep. really. Yep, quite, quite an, an expected, expected lineup. One. And then Arsenal, Manon, 
Who's been what? What's the word she read? What word she we use for Manu's <laughs> performance this season, Shabam? I, so far, uh, rubbish. Would be a woman. <laughs> Shibam, that's, that's Shibam. tough. I, I, you can always count on Shibam to give you the word. I mean, rubbish. No, but, but 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 I mean, let's face it. I, I think Avita Manu has done well. I, I, I had my, I had my doubts. You know, stepping into Chesney's shoes was going to be, uh, I, I thought it was going to be a bit of a big deal, but Manoni stepped up. Yes, he's giving goals away, but some of the goals he's considered have not been his fault. The defensive frailties have exposed them. I think he's done very well to this point. Interesting indeed. And if you look at the teams, let's start looking at the way they are going to line up. Um, toss, toss, toss of the coin. Nathan, <laughs> you want Arsenal or Fulham? Shivam, what do you want? Uh, well, I'll do Fulham. Okay, you okay. up. So, Nathan, take us through the Arsenal team. Uh, How should we expect them to shape up in 10 minutes when we have kickoff? Well, I mean, quickly, I just went through the, 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 the line. Manone, you have Manone in post. Sanya, Meta, Saka, Koscielny, Vermeulen. Vermeulen goes to left back today. Mm, you have Kokele, cool. Ateta, deep in midfield. Kasola plays in front of them. Lucas Podolski, Theo Walcott are in the wide areas. And Olivier Giroud would, would lead the line. Of course, a typical as, as no setup. Today, Cochrane steps up because, again, last week when they played at Old Trafford, they lacked somebody with a bit of a presence. I thought that Asin Wenger should have taken off Rocher earlier. He's thrown on uh, Cochrane to provide a bit of steel. Today, but that fate of circumstance has played the hand of, of uh, Asin Wenger to push Cochrane into that. He provides a bit of some solidity. Uh, Arteta should be the link man between midfield and attack. Athola, as usual, should provide all the dazzling stuff. Podolski, again, even though he's running down the left and, and, and not providing too many crosses, he's still not and embedded himself into this Arsenal team. Today, he must work hard. He must shoot more, provide more, be a bit more active for me. Theo Walcott, player of the moment for Arsenal for me, scored a lot of goals, but today he must create because he's playing out wide. And then when, and when the chance comes, he should take it. Giroud will lead the line. And I think today is a day where the players must begin to realise this. And even though Olivier Giroud might come into Arsenal with a good record of scoring 21 goals in France, he needs service to score. He's not those strikers that can create goals for him for themselves. Podolski and Walcott, especially Casola, must give a lot of good passes to Giroud and then they must support him so when he's in an disadvantaged position, he can lay it off for them to score. But that's how Arsenal will really play. Lots of fluidity in the midfield. The wide areas will have a lot of running Podolski, Walcott and then you'd expect Giroud to put the ball away as and when he gets it. Shivan, we'll come to you for the full bit, but a few Arsenal fans already given us what they think. Adumako Sasha on our uh, Twitter feed, he tweets, he says, Arsenal to win today. It's about time we get the season back on track. Come on, Arsenal. Ibrahim Mumuni on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash city97.3 says, Arsenal must focus. I agree. Frank Adoble also on our Facebook page says, today's game serves as another huge test for Arsenal's top four chances. Kweku, Kweu on our Google Plus. Our Google Plus is City. FM fan page also says Arsenal is losing by two goals to nil. Uh, Kweku, it's not the captaincy, the boy Shakeke. He's talking <laughs> about Thomas Vermalin. But we'll talk about Vermalin and other issues in a bit as well. Shivam, take us through the Fulham side. Obviously, the threat is Dimitar Berbatov, but Arsenal may have to look at other people as well. Yeah, I think uh, Brian Ruiz will be their main player to watch today. Because I think he won't play alongside Berbatov. He'll play just behind Berbatov in a f sort of 4 4 one, one formation. And uh, where I think Fulham are the most weakest will be down their left. Because Risa likes to get forward. And if uh, Walcott can get, be, get, uh, get beat Risa and uh, get some balls into the box, I think that's Arsenal's best route to goal. But otherwise, it's a very workmanlike Fulham uh, starting eleven. Interesting indeed. We have seven minutes to kick off, but let's take a look at the injury situations for both teams. Fulham are quite okay. I mean, there was a point at the start of the season where they, they had so many <laughs> issues because they were shell-shocked with the departures of some of their key players and yeah. all that. But things have stabilized quite a bit, you must agree, and they don't have a lot of injuries. You can mention only Simon Davis as the guy who's injured, but for Arsenal, you could have a proper starting 11 of injured <laughs> players. Rosiski. There's um, Abu Diaby, there's Fabianski, Gervinho, there's Jack Wilshere, there's Chesney, Kieran Gibbs, um, Oxley Chamberlain, Aaron Ramsey. <laughs> how are they going to survive after for this for the duration of this game? How are these injuries going to affect them? And then subsequently, how are they going to you know 
Savannah. <sighs> well, I, I I look at the, the the list you've mentioned. I think Aaron Ramsey, would, personally, from it from from my point of view, he would stand out as somebody Arsenal would, would need. He's not been afraid of a lot of Arsenal fans, but again, look at the amount of technical ability he has. What he can do out wide in the middle of the park, especially, gives Arsenal a lot of threat. It's sad to see Jack O'Shea not play because ever since he's back, it's, it's been it's been refreshing to see him play from from an England fans point of view you know it's been refreshing to see him play it's good he's been caught up he provides Arsenal with a lot of bite some of the things that Fabregas and Nasri provided the likes of Ramsey and Wilshere provide exactly those same things so those players will be key but apart from that Diaby also started well he's away but Coquelin steps into into the fray and then he, he will hold the role I, I look at the left back position and I'm sure Tommy Vermena would have would, would want to play at centre back because Gibbs is, is a better left back than Vermeer. Vermeer has not played there in a very, very, very long time for both club and country. So Arsenal would have to chop and change. We'll have to go through this game, see how it pans out for the next two, three weeks. Because I think that, I mean, uh, Rocha should return the next week if my memory serves me right. Diaby is not too far away. Rosiski just came back from injury. So between now and by the end of November, early December, they should have their squad back and then push on from there. But today, I think this 11 should be enough to give them something out of this Very game. interesting because I'll just come to sum up the styles of the two teams. You've done that brilliant for Arsenal, Nathan. Basically, what you've said is that Arsenal like to control the game the oppositions have. That's, they that's... attempt through balls often. It's not always successful, but their possession of the ball is quite significant it's, 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 and, and, and it's quite key. good. Key. They like to attack down the left. You mentioned some of the players who do that. Occasionally, they take long shot and it's down to Santi Carzola. <laughs> Let me ask you now, Shivam. Looking at these strengths of Arsenal, Fulham style is based on three things. They are non-aggressive, they like playing in their own half, and they attack through the middle. How would Fulham, with this kind of style, want to hit at Arsenal at the Emirates? I think that they'll just look to soak up pressure and then try to get a quick counter-attack going. Um, if they can get the ball to Brian Ruiz, and maybe he can... Because uh, he, he is excellent on the ball, Brian Ruiz. So if he can set Berbatov free, then maybe that's where Fulham can uh, get uh, get a goal from. But otherwise, I can't see any other way. I'm looking at the, looking at the two, two lineups today. Very well. Again, Nathan, I mean, Fulham's strengths include creating long short opportunities. They are very, very good at that as well. Arsenal are typically not good at defending long ball situations. They will take their chances. The likes of Ruiz and Berbatov would, 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 would be the main targets. But again, I, you know, coming into this game, I did a bit, a bit of background check. For me, Arsenal lead Fulham in terms of success. No, Fulham lead Arsenal in terms of success in the area of situations. Mm-hmm. Then it comes down to the strength of Bird and Check, Sidwell. You know, Hangeland and, and, Hugh, and Hughes. Those those two, those four guys, Hangeland and Hughes especially, because when the set pieces are long, Hangeland will run in there. He's a bit, very big guy. His physical presence alone can provide a bit of a problem for Arsenal, especially when, when people like Koscielny and now that teams want to defend zonally and all of that. But Fulham will look, to do, will look to do a lot of that. I get the feeling Richardson and the, guy, the, the Jagger will have to do a bit more running just to provide the crosses, but as Ashivam said, they would have to soak the pressure a bit. They can't afford to open up in the wide areas. Arsenal can't hit them hard enough, and then it will be a difficult afternoon for, for wrapping up now. Arsenal have maybe a worst ever start to a Premier League season, and as they've been at this year, they've picked up just 15 points from their first 10 games and lost three of their last five Premier League outings. Shivam, your predictions? I'll go uh, for 4 0 to Arsenal. Right. Nathan, <laughs> Fulham have never beaten Arsenal away from home with Arsenal winning 22 times in addition to four draws. Nathan? I think it stays that way. For me, Arsenal should win this 3-1. Right. It's time for the football. We've done all talking. Arsenal have conceded eight league goals this season, the fewest in the top flight. Yet, people consistently think that um, they will not finish even in the top four. We are going to the Emirates for the commentary now. Arsenal versus Fulham coming up first half commentary of that game. Your commentators, Phil Blacker and Martin Lawrence. 